We can edit that bit out. Hello! Bonjour. Welcome back to Dead Air Specialist in live action. <laughs> Matt bought the SD card, so. Ooh. Welcome back. Um, you don't know what this show's about. No. 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 Let me explain for you. And you. Um, basically, we want views, so Premier League's a big thing, right? So is it? Yeah, is everyone, it? everyone loves that. Everyone loves that. Just stare at the camera, and oh, my computer's having a seizure again. Uh, so every week we're reviewing each match week's load of games. Okay. The Prem. Okay. And you give me your thoughts. I listen to them. We have players of the week. You, you give me a player of the week who you think played the best this week, and take it from there. So, just a player or like a whole team of the week? Just um, my. Um, it's up for debate, but I did a player last week. I did Mason Mount, and that proved dividends this week. Yeah, he scored on his home debut. So he did. Yeah, that is good. How are you enjoying the football season so far, Matthew? Well, I'm glad club football's back. I'm not gonna lie about that. It's been a boring summer. Mm-hmm. Um, As always. Yeah. Football goes away and it's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. Just always something to look forward to each week, you know. For the um, audience, what fan are you? I'm a Spurs fan. That's two Spurs fans in a row. What? Who was on? Nikos was on last week. Ah. Yeah. So, so if you're not a Spurs fan and you want to um, get involved and be on the show, then uh, pastyship productions at gmail.com and put dead air specialists in the title. Also, send us your videos. Or if more Spurs fans want to come on just to annoy George, that is also acceptable. That's. Let's, you know, a bit of variety. <laughs> that's, the ma- that's the aim of the game. I mean, we need to get Villa, Bournemouth, Everton, loads of everyone. Not, not Man United. Why not? Actually, no, they all live in London anyway, so it's probably easy for them to get here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I asked this last week, but because it's still... Did you think you had a good transfer window? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, anything is better than the last two that mm. we had beforehand. Oh, well, you didn't buy or anything. get anyone? Yeah. Just didn't buy anything or anyone. And we got rid of uh, a couple of people of our wage bill that just don't play at all, so... I would say I would say it's a solid eight and a half knee slaps out of ten. Well, that's a great rating, and that is the new rating system. <laughs> As I said last week, I really think we had a really good window. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to seeing if it actually pays dividends or not. Shall we get into this week's games, Matthias? Yeah. We shall. I saved the picture so that I would know. First up, we had early kickoff on Saturday. We had Arsenal Burnley. Yeah. First home game of the season for us, and we didn't lose, which I thought we would. I think it was really important for us, especially with Liverpool next week, to have maximum points, just so that then when we inevitably get slapped up next week, then we're not as far behind as we could have been. Because if we'd have lost one of, like, if we'd have lost to Newcastle or lost on Saturday. And I think we would be in a lot worse of a position than we are now. But six points from six, I'm happy. Bit of a shaky, shaky few minutes. But I mean, to be fair, at before the game started, I did think it was going to be a solid one nil to Burnley. Oh, well, it wouldn't have surprised me if it was. Um, I mean, watching your performance against Newcastle last week, it heroes. You know, it wasn't heroes. We dug deep. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> It ended you don't up, sound very convinced. No, I'm not. But it did end up surprisingly being actually a very good game. Mm-hmm. Um, your new loanee is going to be great. Sabalos. Until he goes back to Real Madrid at the end of the summer. You're just salty because you couldn't sign him. No, because we wanted to sign him with an option to buy him. And you guys just went, no, yeah, we'll take him for the season. Because yeah. can't really get anyone yeah. else. And no, we'll... You're just you're just jealous, you know, salt and pepper. That's all I'm no, saying. To be honest, I'm actually not because I did. Uh, we got the two people that I wanted. Mm. I mean, I would have preferred Ruben Neves, but we never went in for him at all. That's just. And I think Neves proved why you should have gone in for him. Uh, yeah, two one. I mean, he's just someone that I really like. Lacquer and Abba picking up where they left off last season. Good first game back for Lacquer and 
I'm 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 happy. I'm happy. I think defensively they still, you know, need a bit of work. I think I think Louise, you know, he was he was good. He was very sort of commanding and uh, playing out from the back, obviously suits his style. And Leno had a couple of shaky moments, but apart from that, I think solid got the job done. Yeah. Grinding out results that you, we would have got, lost. You've got a leader back there now mm. as well. So yeah. we get we get we're grinding results that realistically last season we would have lost. lost or drawn. So no, I'm just a, lost. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just lost. <laughs> so now, um, Aston Villa one, Bournemouth two. Yeah, Jack Grealish has lost twenty Premier League games in a row. Surprising no one at all. Do you like Jack Grealish? Um. Yes and no. Mm-hmm. That he show he's he's like a Lamella to me. He shows promise of being a really, really, really good player, and then he's just really frustrating all at the same time. Yeah. Um, John McGinn though. Mm-hmm. Class player. Very good. And uh, is it Douglas Louise? Yeah. The one who scored. The one who scored that not yeah. goal. I mean, consolation didn't really do much apart from restore some pride. But other than that, fantastic strike. Bournemouth, strength to strength, really. They're sort of one of them teams that I think is eyeing up, trying to get in the top six, along with like Everton, Wolves, possibly Watford. Them kind of teams that want to try and break into that group. Yeah. But time will tell. They're always a bit of a bogey team. You don't know what you're going to get with them. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if Villa started getting some redu- results. Yeah. In the next few games. Villa do look like a good team to me. They just spent the fucking most. Did they spend the most? Yeah, like hundred and twenty something mil. Jesus. I think they brought in like twelve players. Yeah, they mm-hmm. literally just went oh, crazy because you do have to spend money to stay up. Yeah. Do you think they will? I reckon they'll stay up. At this early stage, who are you calling to go down? <sighs> Crystal Palace. Yeah. Um. Nah, that's it. Just, okay, Crystal Palace. just Crystal Palace. I think Newcastle are going down. Nah, I, re- I reckon Newcastle will grind out some results enough to at least stay up. They normally always do. I reckon Crystal Palace maybe Sheffield United, although they have looked good so far. <laughs> they look like they're going to be a difficult, difficult team to beat at home. Yeah, and I I don't reckon Norwich will go down. No. Norwich look like uh, they're going to stay up, probably get about mid-table. Chelsea? <laughs> Chelsea. Well, you never know at this point. Uh, Brighton won. West Ham won. West Ham unlucky to not get the win, conceding another bloody goal. They, I mean, at least they weren't slapped about like they were against City. Five I think nil. West. I think they need to sort of start finding some fight from somewhere because they just look like they're not sort of all back in the game yet. No, actually, I'm going to change my answer. Go on then. Crystal Palace, West Ham, and Chelsea all to go down. Fair enough. I I, I'm fine I with don't that. see them getting enough points. They look terrible. They looked terrible well, last season. Both of them. <laughs> like West Ham looked terrible last season. That so far they haven't proved that they're any better. No, and then losing on out of it, she's gonna. You got to get them goals from somewhere. And who who have they got up front? Hernandez. I don't know anymore. I don't really pay attention. They got bought that um thingy guy um. Whatever his name is, they bought him. The guy, the guy from Basel. The, uh, oh yeah, the one who hasn't done like anything so far, so nobody actually knows his name. Yeah, that yeah. one. <laughs> yep. Uh, Everton won. Watford nil. Good home win for Everton. A good solid start from them. Got a solid nine points off um Digne. Oh, in your fantasy team. team. No. Nice. <laughs> I love your um fantasy team name. Oh yeah, show me the money. Yeah. yeah. Literally, if I knew if I knew it was like player puns, I'd have made a bit of an effort. I just called mine Prosecco Friday. Well, I just it just came to me. I was at work and somebody came by wearing a Mane shirt, and I was like, "Show me the money." Yeah, I was like, "Yep, I know what my team name's gonna be." Two decent sides that are looking to break into that top six set with Everton and Watford, with the amount of spending the players they bought in and the quality in the class. Danny Welbeck. Yeah, great striker. I reckon. Surprised we didn't well, keep him because we're a bit short options. If no, anyone gets injured, he got loads up from. What Abba, Lacazette, and Martinelli? Eddie and Kitty has gone out on loan. Ah, well, that still should be enough. 
But, Fingers um, crossed. I reckon Everton will definitely finish above Wolves this season. You think? Yeah. Where would you see him, like 7th, 6th? I see Everton finishing about 8th and then Watford about ninth. Like yeah, do it, uh, yeah. upper, but not quite top six. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, Everton look like the better side at the moment. I reckon if they continue, they'll end up actually being the better side by yeah. the end of the season as well. Yeah. They look like they're just going to constantly keep improving, which yeah. is always good to see from a team. Yeah, especially one of like them. Um, you look, you want, you want it to be close. You don't want it to like. It's more exciting. Yeah. Maybe not for when your team's doing bad and you've got a team like that breathing down your neck, closing closing the gaps. But, say, La Vie. Uh We had Norwich 3, Newcastle United. Uno. Fantastic hat-trick. I am gutted I did not put Pukai in my fantasy team. Uh, I didn't either. I am gutted. He was, like, one of the cheapest ones as well. And he's, so far... Joint top goal scorer. No, he is. Yeah. I'm right top goal scorer. He's got no. four, right? Yeah, Sterling's got four because Sterling got a hat. Oh trick. yeah, he got a hat trick and then yeah, yeah, joint top goal scorer at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So looking good for Norwich. I mean, they got their consolation goal at, uh, at Anfield, and yeah. now they got a nice home win under their belt. They seem to be. They got a foothold. Let's see where they go from there. Do you see them pushing on, getting in top half of the table? Maybe not top half, but I say at least probably middle table. Yeah, around eleventh or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That not wouldn't be bad for your first season back in English football. I mean, how I long? I mean, top deal. How long have Norwich been out of the top? Uh, I want to say about four years, because they came back up recently, didn't they? I don't know. I don't know. If you know the answer, put it in the comments. We won't read them, but put it in the comments. Southampton 1, Liverpool 2, the only other team with maximum points so far, Liverpool. Do they look more beatable this season? They look more beatable. Southampton could have at least drawn that game, I yeah. reckon. Mane looks to be the outright best player for Liverpool at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he put chance after chance on the plate for like Firmino and the others. He just didn't put him away. But yep. I mean, providing Mane stays fit, I still don't reckon you can beat him that easily. Yeah. But I mean, all you need is an injury or two, and I reckon Liverpool will struggle. Oh, definitely. Uh, you've got the big game of Saturday. Manchester City 2, Tottenham Hotspur 2. This was an eventful one. Sort of a bit. V-A-R. V-A-R. <laughs> Ironically, VAR is your best player. It was. You should sign him up. It was. It was a bit all over the show. Like I feel like Man City never really got out of second gear. I feel like there was so many chances first half, and when they were ahead in the second to bury the game, but they just didn't do it. I mean, surprisingly enough, both teams looked flat. Mm. But then, I'm not sure if that was just because of the competition between the two teams, and it just made it look flat. Mm. I mean, I do want to talk about our new signing. Go on then. I mean, his stats in the game, especially against Man City, at the end, he had away from home. I mean, he had like a hundred percent in like dual tackle interceptions, and like he was without a doubt our best player behind probably Lloris. What was he saying? Um, you talking about Dumbele? Dumbele, yeah. Ndombele, um, Ndombele. I mean, he, he had like 100% in tackle, duels, interceptions, like everything. Away from home at yeah. Man City, that is one hell of an impressive stat. And I reckon if we don't have, if we didn't, if we didn't have him in the team, I reckon we would have got slapped up about 4-1. Easy. I mean, yeah. he was keeping De Bruyne just sort of quiet. Apart from obviously he's too... Absolutely fantastic passes that led to goals. So, mm. but really, a new great goal on his debut last week. Yeah, 
Fantastic. Can't really argue with that at all. I should probably go next one on him, shouldn't I? No, just let him stay outside. Okay. Can't let him in. There's going to be editing. Now I've got to try on the camera. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so in Dombele. Absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, the start of his... Like, the start of last game... It was a bit shaky, but you know. He's got a great goal. Getting adjusted, he scored a goal, got a bit of confidence, and now he's just getting better and better. I reckon by the end of the season, he'll be our best player, without a doubt. <laughs> without a doubt. Connor says no chance. Connor, who do you support? The voice of football over here. Um. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> is that you, God? <laughs> Shearer? I'm a, I'm a gunner on the way. <laughs> I'm a gunner, mate. Yes! Yes, hand. <laughs> um, I honestly thought you were going to John Cena the camera then because you were like, you can't see me. Well, you can't. It'll, be, can't. it'll be interesting to see how Lissa so fares. I reckon he should get he a came on, didn't out. He He did, but only for like five minutes, so oh. I wouldn't really count, count it as anything. No. Controversial VAR decision was the uh, clincher. Do you think it was the right decision? Yes. Is that because you're a Spurs fan and it would No, because if you look at it, if it didn't hit his arm, the ball wouldn't have been diverted into the direction of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Take nothing away, because I think it was an absolutely fantastic goal by him. Mm. But if it didn't hit, who was it, Laporte? Yeah. If it didn't hit Laporte's arm, it would not have ended up over by Jesus. Yeah, but Laporte was not in an unnatural position, and you can't really get out of the way of that. I think... Even problems first year VAR, they'll get fixed, they'll get ironed out, and they'll sort of like refine it a bit. But like stuff like that, it's a lot of it is leniency of like um, referees interpretation. Yeah, but I think that if you're going to VAR that, you should have given Man City a penalty in the first half when Lamella had his arms around um, Rodri's neck. Yeah, a hundred percent. It should have been a penalty in the first half. We should have lost. Um, Say la vie. But then it's not so much VAR's fault as it is. It's the ref. The, it's the it's the Down law. The ref, yeah. No, it's the law. It's like the law says if it touches a handball and you're an attacking and you're in the penalty area, it's a free kick to the other team. But that's only because that part of the law changed for this season. No, no. last season that they wouldn't have given that. No. So. But currently, how the law stands at the moment, I mean, if you look at it by law, it's the correct decision. Fair enough. And so now we're on Sunday now, aren't we? So oh, Sheffield United one, Crystal Palace nil. <laughs> Crystal Palace are going down. That's all I can say about that one. Zaha getting booed. <laughs> Bit shocked about that. A good, well taken goal from Sheffield United. I think they're going to be difficult to beat at home this season. Yeah. They look like they're building a bit of a fortress. Ed Bramall Lane. That is the right one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Something like that. Don't know. Um, but Zaha, yeah. I mean, he needs to leave. He deserves to be at a better club. Yeah. Oh, it. no brainer. You'd have. Would you take him at Spurs? I would. I would take him. I just wouldn't take him for what the the asking price now. Eighty million yeah. asking price that Palace mm, want for him. No, exactly. Take him for a solid like fifty. Yeah, a push. Swap deal for Lamella. Can they just but, take Lamella? But, but Lamella scored a good, great goal, so. Yeah. But then, it, that was going back to that game, it was Edison was so far the other side. It was good of Lamella to catch it that, like his positioning, because he was so off balance that he just found the space. And that also goes back to my thing earlier, like Lamella, is just, to me, is just the most frustrating player. To You've watch. got a love hate relationship with Eric Lamella. Yeah. It's he, he loves you and you hate him. <laughs> Because he shows promise to be a world-class player, and then he will just be like, hi, other team, here's the ball. Or I'm just going to fall over, I'm just going to boot it out of the pitch, or I'm just going to smack it over a stadium. like. But then he goes ahead and smacks one in past Edison from miles out, and then gave an assist to Mora. Give me some Mora. Mora should be starting for you. No doubt about it. Chelsea Chelsea won, Leicester City won. Life's not good for Frank Lampard right now. They're going down. They're going down. 
he's getting sacked in the... no with Frank you've got to give him time because he's trying to build Ute well I think Frank Lankard Frank Lankard Frank Lankard <laughs> should not have gone to Chelsea no, I think he, he should have stayed, stayed at Derby yeah I mean wait he should have stayed at Derby 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 and Barbie <laughs> You also should have stayed with Barbie, but <laughs> um, I mean, what he managed for a year, and then went to arguably one of the biggest clubs in football. I mean, I personally wouldn't say it, but <laughs> really should have stayed with Barbie. Yeah, <laughs> that's the title. <laughs> but like, he hasn't had enough experience, and Chelsea no. are in a it's a big step. terrible position currently at the moment. That as well. Yeah. Like plus they are plastic. No. Yeah. Chairs. Not fantastic. Like, Not all of them. I didn't realise we were talking about Man City again. They're the same, really. Yeah. I mean, Chelsea only existed from 2004, and Man City only started existing probably like 2011. I wouldn't have even said that. I would have said two. No, that's when they bought Rubinho. I would have said that's <laughs> when they bought Rubinho. Yeah, but they won the league in 2011, 2012. Oh, well. Aguero! I swear you'll never see anything like it ever again. Aguero. Um. Uh, Mason Mount, great player that I've called out because he was my player of the week last week. He scored. A, I mean, a bit lucky, but he scored his first goal under Frank. Great young player. I think he's only just going to go from strength to strength because I think if you give yeah. Frank the time, he's going to build a great young squad. With the players that he's got in there, because with the likes of like Tammy Abraham and stuff like that, it's gonna. I think it's only gonna get better. But do Chelsea give him time, or do they not? I mean, it's Chelsea. They're not going to. No, they never do. Two months later, Frankie will be sacked, and uh, Chelsea will be relegated. Mm. Leicester unlucky not to win that game, because yep. them last five minutes they were pushing hard, and they should have got the winner. Madison skying it over the bloody bar. Yeah, 100%. But, like, a great equaliser, and they really sort of just... They looked disappointed, which was nice to see the fight from them. It looked like they were, the roles were, revert, were reversed with that kind of stuff. Leicester don't seem to be missing Maguire either, which is always good. Mm. Speaking of missing Maguire... Hi, Mr. Toby. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Toby. Speaking of Toby Maguire... <laughs> Harry. The final game, which was last night... Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Manchester United. Can't one all. Can't wait to see United finish ninth and Wolves to finish about sixth. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised because uh, what Nunes is doing with Wolves, they just like got so much passion and firepower, and like the players they brought in a class, and the players that they've kept. Like when you look at, they've got the likes of Matinho, Neves. And like they had, oh, what's the guy who come on? Who's like right wing back, like Adana or something like that. Yeah. Right. It's got great. And that goal, that equaliser by Neves was just like that was just superb. For me, Wolves were good last season. They look to be even better this season. Mm. I think they'll go further in cup competitions. I think they'll push to the line for a European place. They're in Europa League now. I reckon they I, qualify, huh? I reckon they'll go far in Europe. I reckon hopefully, they'll go hopefully far they look, in Europe. Imagine if they knock they United out. Oh, that would be hilarious. That so. would be great. Um, Paul Pogba missed a penalty. What Should they? he have taken the penalty? It depends on who the penalty taker really is. Well, Gary Neville seemed to be quite annoyed on the Monday Night Football. I mean, from what I was listening to TalkSport on the way home yesterday, mm -hmm. and I was hearing... I can't think of who it was who was speaking, but they were talking about how Ollie turned around and went, well, I actually have two pe uh, two designated penalty takers. Mm -hmm. And if that is true, that is stupid. And if it's not true, who actually is the designated penalty taker and whoever it is, they should be taking the penalties. So whether it is Pogba and Pogba missed, then, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. But then, if it's Rashford, Pogba took it. Pogba missed. They seem to have a bit of a word, like, you know, like, like you want it, I'll take it, blah, blah, blah. There didn't seem to be any, like, Pogba taking the ball off of Rashford, so. But then when Rashford scored a penalty last week, you'd think you'd give 
It's a Rashford. We'll give you a Rashford, give you a striker, uh, Bloody go. And but... Rashford is surprisingly got a good track record when taking penalties as well. Mm-hmm. What is it, in the last six and six in all when he, when he puts them away, he puts them away. Yeah. Uh, a great first goal to open the scoring by Anthony Martial. Proper striker's finish. He seems to be getting a bit of his confidence back in his former self. So hopefully, you know, this is the start of a good season for him because I rate him as a player. Although he did miss that chance earlier on. Mm. But his goal was well taken. Yeah, so you absolutely fantastic. You cannot really argue with that in any way, shape or form. Um, so who was your player of the week this week, Matt? Um, Kevin De Bruyne. Fair, fair. Kevin De Bruyne. Um, he looks to be back to his best, mm-hmm. which is... Leading by example because he was given the armband on Saturday. I reckon it's actually terrible that he's actually back to his bed best but you do have to rate him oh he's fantastic fantastic um i'm gonna give a special shout out for my um, player of the week this week which is danny caballos it's the only it's the only time i'm gonna be biased because nicholas nicholas was biased last week because he chose him below fair play yeah but i think with like two assists on his debut and he just sort of seemed to be just this fluid free flowing passing that we haven't had from a center midfielder since like the likes of santi cazorla Something like that. Like, like even we didn't have that with Ramsey. Was Ramsey was more direct. It was just like he was finding passes. It was a good, solid performance. And he was the man of the match, and he still came off with, like, 30 minutes to go. So, Danny Caballos for me, and Kevin De Bruyne for you. And I also do want to give a shout-out to Mane, just because it's my fantasy football team yeah. name as well. Do you, f- do you think the, um, the Chelsea-Liverpool results are because of them playing in the Super Cup on Wednesday? Think that had an effect. A little bit, but then not a great deal. Because mm-hmm. I mean, as much as the Super Cup did go on, and obviously it took a bit out of the players. I mean, with a team like Liverpool, but they were playing just as much as Tottenham were, like every other day, basically. So for Liverpool, I don't think it just made that much of a difference. I think it was just a bad day at the office, but. Is what it is, really. It is what it is. Should we have a look at the Premier League table before we go? Can I give a shout out to Neil Walcott? Yeah. Yeah, Walcott. Okay. No. Yeah, Walcott. 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 Y
Mane winner. You'll think we're going to get two goals at Anfield on a Saturday. Yeah. Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's by tuning in next week. If you want to get involved and be here, like right here. Right here. Right here. Paste sheep. Paste sheep productions at gmail.com. Dead air specialists <laughs> is the title. Send us your videos telling us how you think your team did this week because then we can put them in. We haven't had any videos yet. And e- also email us your questions. Tweet us using the dead air specialist hashtag at pasty sheep. Pro- no, at just at pasty sheep. I don't know why I keep shouting productions. Productions, productions at people. Pro but doctor. that is that is about it for now. Matthew, thank you for joining me and thanks for bringing the SD card this week. You're welcome. Yeah, cool. And uh, you've got um, a bit of footballing stuff that you're doing. Yeah. Are you allowed to say it? Uh, not at the moment, no. Cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So just keep a look out for Matt's face in some videos, maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, not ours. We're, we're just going to end this episode off by going V A R. V A R. V A R. All right. And that is what you call small club mentality. No, I just like chanting it. It's just funny. <laughs> North London's still red, mate. Yeah, you wish. Tune in next week. And the week after that, when it's Arsenal Tottenham. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.